Chapter 1, Prologue plus Chapter 1 Legacy. In the Og Earth, the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the bustling streets of Manhattan. Amidst the urban symphony of car engines and distant conversations, a young man named Kevin White navigated the crowds with practiced ease. His lean frame and tousled golden hair gave him an air of unassuming normalcy, but there was an aura of determination in his red hazel eyes that hinted at a hidden purpose. Kevin was 23 years old, an orphan who had grown up in the foster care system after losing his parents in a tragic accident. Despite the challenges he'd faced, he had managed to find his own path. With a backpack slung over one shoulder, he made his way towards a zebra crossing on the outskirts of the city. Tonight, he had a rendezvous that would change his life forever. Horn 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 crash bang, boom, one. The world spin for a second before darkness consume him, maybe a second, maybe hour or maybe eternity later. He opened his eyes and here he was standing dimly lit room. One. With his calm demeanor and cleverness he guessed he died and this place is like an void or an abyss. One. From the corner of a dimly lit room, and a figure cloaked in shadows awaited him. As the figure approached near him while Sharodet in shadows only the white teeth was showing from his smile. The figure stepped into a flickering pool of light, reveling not a man nor women or any human. Its body was akin to be made of shadow only the eyes and mouth were white. Kevin White, I presume. The figure's voice akin to a child but not at the same time it was also like robotic, it was a mix of curiosity and authority. 1. Kevin nodded, his heart pounding with a mixture of fearfulness but also excitement and trepidation. Yeah, that's me. And you must be the god or some godlike one, so I am dead. The figure's lips quirked in a faint smile. Indeed. My name is Max, and I am one of the children of God, tasked with delivering an unfortunate soul to cycle of afterlife, rebirth, reincarnation, and sometime for the fun of it transmigration, and in your case it is the last one. 2. Kevin's eyes widened, a jumble of emotions flooding his mind, he has read many fanfic and novel about this type of scenario. Wait, so like you're giving me a chance to go to other world? Movies, fiction, comics even? Why? Max's gaze held a knowing look. Yes, yes, but you cannot choose which world you go to. The God has already selected as he is omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. He knows your past and knows the talk we are having and can foretell the future. God has already selected a world with the gift which you will like very much in your next life. You're not an ordinary young man, Kevin but don't start thinking you are chosen one or something. The God chooses the soul very carefully. God senses qualities that can't always be seen on the surface courage, resilience, and the potential to make a difference. Kevin scratched his head, trying to wrap his head around the enormity of the situation. I'm just a kid who's been trying to survive on his own. I'm not some hero. 1. Max's chuckle was warm. Heroes aren't born overnight, Kevin. They're forged through the choices they make. The God can give you the opportunities, but it's up to you to decide how to make use of them. With a sense of reverence, Max extended his hand, presenting the gift, revealing an unusual device that appeared on his left wrist, a sleek, black, and green contraption that seemed to pulse with energy. It was the Omnitrix, a powerful and enigmatic device that had the ability to transform its user into various alien forms. 2. Its display shimmered with an array of alien silhouettes, each one waiting to be unlocked and used. Kevin hesitated for a moment before gently touching the device. A surge of energy coursed through him, and he felt a connection unlike anything he'd ever experienced. As the Omnitrix bonded with him, Kevin's mind was flooded with images and sensations. He saw strange planets, epic battles, and a sense of responsibility that dwarfed anything he'd felt before. It was as if the Omnitrix carried within it the legacy of countless beings who had come before him. Remember, Kevin, this is a gift and a responsibility, Max said. The Omnitrix can be a force for good, but it can also be misused. It's your choice. The weight of those words settled on Kevin's shoulders. He looked up at Max, determination clear in his eyes. I won't let you down. Max nodded approvingly. I believe in you. Embrace your journey, Kevin White. Your destiny awaits. With a final nod, Max vanished into the shadows, leaving Kevin alone in the place with the Omnitrix pulsing on his wrist. Slowly he is also disappearing into a light particle. Earth Young Justice Universe. 1. Kevin appears near the alleyway near the city block. The city's sound seemed distant, as if the world had shifted on its axis. Kevin took a deep breath after gaining memory of this world. God has thought of everything like he has a genuine background in this new world like his house, couple of money and many more, a world with superpower, heroes, and villains his heart racing with a mix of apprehension and excitement. After looking around he found he is in a city called Metroburg. The city of Metroburg hummed with life as people hurried along its bustling streets. Neon lights painted the night with vibrant hues, casting a kaleidoscope of colors on the rain-slicked pavement. He first went to his house in this new world. His new house is more presentably compared to his previous house back in his previous life. After freshening up and changing into a new cloth he went out to see this new world. Third person POV flashback 30 minute before Kevin arrived in the new world. Among the throng of pedestrians was a young man named Kevin White, his hoodie pulled up to shield himself from the chilly drizzle. At 18, he had already seen his fair share of challenges, having grown up as an orphan in this very city. Kevin's life had been a series of ups and downs. From a young age, he had learned to rely on his wit and resourcefulness to navigate the gritty alleys and hidden corners of Metroburg. But despite the hardships, he carried himself with a determination that spoke of resilience and an unyielding spirit. He had a secret, though one that set him apart from the other struggling souls in the city. Tucked away beneath his long sleeves was the watch-like device, a mysterious device he had discovered two days ago fateful night. Its smooth, black surface was adorned with a vibrant green dial in the center. Little did he know that this device, which had fused itself onto his wrist, held the power to transform him into various alien creatures with unique abilities. It was both a gift and a burden, one that he was still learning to control. 2. As Kevin walked through the city streets, his thoughts were a whirlwind. The recent surge in crime had not gone unnoticed by him, and he couldn't help but feel a sense of responsibility. He had the means to make a difference, even if he didn't fully grasp the extent of his abilities yet. The rain-soaked streets seemed to reflect his inner turmoil, mirroring the conflict between his desire to help and his fear of the unknown. Turning into a narrow alley, Kevin quickened his pace. His makeshift shelter a small hidden alcove was tucked away here, offering a semblance of safety in the chaotic city. The Omnitrix, glinting faintly in the dim light, felt heavy on his wrist. He pushed back his blonde wet hair and let out a sigh, his breath visible in the cool air. Another night, another round of unanswered questions, he muttered to himself. Just as he was about to step into his shelter, a loud crash echoed from the other end of the alley. His senses immediately went on high alert. 
Kevin's hand instinctively moved to the Omnitrix, his heart racing with a mix of anxiety and anticipation. Cautiously, he approached the source of the commotion. As he turned the corner, his eyes widened at the scene before him. A group of thugs had cornered a young woman against a brick wall. The woman's back was pressed against the damp surface, her eyes wide with fear. Kevin's jaw clenched. He knew he couldn't stand by and watch. He had the power to make a difference, even if he didn't fully understand it. Hey, he called out, his voice surprisingly steady despite the adrenaline coursing through him. The thugs turned their attention toward him, their expressions a mix of surprise and annoyance. One of them, a burly man with a shaved head, sneered at Kevin. Mind your own business, kid, he spat. Kevin took a deep breath, his fingers gripping the Omnitrix. He dialed the dial, feeling a surge of energy radiate through him. A bright green light enveloped him, and within moments, he had transformed into a towering, four-armed alien creature. 3. The thugs' eyes widened in shock as they beheld the transformation. Before they could react, Kevin charged forward with newfound strength. His extra limbs allowed him to move with a speed and precision that caught them off guard. With a flurry of well-placed blows, he incapacitated the thugs one by one, ensuring they were no longer a threat. As the last of the thugs groaned on the ground, the young woman approached cautiously. Her eyes held a mix of gratitude and curiosity. Are you, some kind of superhero? She asked, her voice quivering. Kevin's heart raced, not just from the exertion of the fight, but from the realization that he had just used his powers to help someone in need. He looked down at his forearms, then back at the woman. I'm still figuring that out myself, he replied with a small, uncertain smile. The woman bows her head a little, her gratitude evident in her eyes. Thank you very much. I'm Mia, even thought you might not be a her zero but for me from tonight you were a hero, she said. Kevin hesitated for a moment before also bowing his head and went away before asking her to call the police and wishing her the safe journey. Kevin reached near the alley and transformed back as Kevin. As the rain began to taper off, he stood amidst the wreckage of the alley. Kevin's heart begins to race like crazy, not because he was excited or happy but because he was dying. Ever since little he had a weak heart and an uncurable disease, so he wasn't also adopted by anybody, even if someone showed interest after hearing about his condition, they lacked interested but showed pity. So, when he found the watch, he didn't use it immediately. Today he had taken his first and last steps into a larger world one that was or would be both thrilling and daunting. And as he looked at his watch and hear the raindrop sound hitting the ground, he slowly closed his eyes. The city had given him its challenges, but it had also given him a one last chance to become something more a hero. Moment his eyes closed his body began to disappeared in a rainbow color light and in replace a white light appeared around the same area. Present. In the bustling city, Kevin now after walking out of the house to roam around in of was a mosaic of neon lights and towering skyscrapers, a place where heroes and villains clashed in a constant struggle for dominance. Few weeks later, a figure darted through the alleys, his movements agile and purposeful. This was Kevin White, he was navigating the treacherous streets with excitement for the future and with the ease of a seasoned parkour artist's skill from his past life. His golden blonde hair and striking red eyes gave him an air of mystery, a quality that had served him well. 2. As Kevin leaped from rooftop to rooftop, a strange device on his wrist glowed with an otherworldly energy. The Omnitrix, a powerful alien device, had bonded with him few weeks ago and it was the daily reminder of his meeting with Max and his arrival to the New World. Since arriving at the New World, he had secretly used the watch to transform into various extraterrestrial forms, each with their unique abilities. It was a secret he guarded closely, as he feared the attention it might attract. He also started going to the gym and started learning some martial art from some dojo near his house. 1. Perched on the edge of a rooftop, Kevin gazed out at the sprawling cityscape. His thoughts wandered to his parents from both the past and the present, whom he could barely remember. They had perished in a car accident when he was just a child, leaving him to fend for himself in the unforgiving world. He had learned early on that trust was a luxury he couldn't afford. Kevin, there you are. Startled, Kevin turned to see a familiar face approaching. It was Leo, 20-year-old a fiery and determined kid he knows from his days on his orphanage, who had become his friend. Dude, you disappeared for a nearly a month again, Leo scolded, his tone laced with genuine concern. I've been looking all over for you. Sorry, Leo, Kevin replied, his lips curling into a sheepish smile. Just needed some time to clear my head. Leo's expression softened, and he took a step closer. You know you can talk to me, right? Whatever's bothering you, I'm here. Kevin's gaze shifted to the Omnitrix on his wrist, its pulsating light a constant reminder of the secret he harbored. He wanted to confide in Leo, to let him in on his newfound abilities, but fear held him back. What if he thought he was a freak? What if he was targeted by the same dangerous forces that had pursued him? I appreciate it, Leo, he replied, his voice tinged with gratitude. I'll be okay, really. Leo studied him for a moment, his eyes narrowing as if he could see through his defenses. Ultimately, he relented, a small sigh escaping his lips. All right, just remember I'm here when you're ready. Dude, enough about me. Tell me about you and Tony. Did he ask you out or not? Kevin while trying to change the topic and it worked. Oh my god, I nearly forgot to tell you about it. Yes, yes, he asked oh and it was so romantic. That candlelight dinner. Oh, th candle it smelled every lovely and you know what he. Hey wait a minute you trying to change the topic. Anyway, while we're talking about it how did it go with Sarah, AJ? You said you were gonna ask her. Wait don't tell me let me deduce me she said no and you fell sad and went to gym and oh now I get it. Aha, uh -huh. was I right? Right. You know I am right. I am gonna be a detective after my graduation you know like my uncle Captain Holt. From the NYPD, 99th prescient. 3. Before Kevin could respond, a deafening explosion rocked the city. The ground quivered beneath them, and the distant wail of sirens filled the air. Leo's eyes widened, and he looked toward Kevin. That didn't sound good, he said, his voice laced with urgency. Kevin nodded, his heart pounding in his chest. It was moments like these that reminded him of the fragility of the world around them, the constant threat that loomed over their lives. I need to find out what's happening, Kevin declared, his eyes locking onto the source of the commotion. After somehow convincing Leo to run back to safety, he raced across the rooftops, following the billowing plumes of smoke that marked the scene of the explosion. As he drew closer, the chaos became apparent. A massive robotic creature, bristling with advanced weaponry, was wreaking havoc in the heart of the city. Civilians scrambled for cover as the city's defenders, both heroes and law enforcement, struggled to contain the mechanical menace. I've got to do something, he said, determination flashing in his eyes. 
Kevin grip on the Omnitrix tightening. This was the moment he had feared and anticipated since his arrival to the New World and after he gained his extraordinary abilities. With a swift motion, he dialed the Omnitrix. The faceplate of the watch pops up and shows a silhouette. He pushes the faceplate back down, the device emitting a radiant light that enveloped him. In seconds, his form underwent a dramatic transformation. 1. Where Kevin once stood, there now stood a towering, muscular alien with rock-like skin and magma coursing through his veins. He was heat blast, a fiery being capable of manipulating flames to his will. With newfound confidence, he leaped from the rooftop, his body ablaze as he soared through the air. 3. Bystander watched in awe as heat blast descended upon the robotic creature. Flames erupted from his hands, engulfing the metallic menace in a searing inferno. The air crackled with heat and energy as the two forces clashed, the city's fate hanging in the balance. Whoa, superhero, it's so cool. Leo from a safe side marveled, his voice tinged with disbelief. Other people also started appreciating him. Cheering and clapping rang around in the air. Heat blast turned to them. Despite the alien appearance, he could still see other people not fearing him. Kevin's determination shining through. Yeah, it's me, Heat Blast replied, his voice a deep rumble. I've got this. As the battle raged on, Heat Blast's flames illuminated the night sky, a beacon of hope against the darkness that threatened to consume them. In that moment, Kevin White embraced his destiny as a hero, his journey into a world of extraordinary challenges just beginning. 1. Chapter 2, Chapter 2 Let's Turn Up the Heat, Chapter 2 Let's Turn Up the Heat, Previously on. Yeah, it's me, Heat Blast replied, his voice a deep rumble. I've got this. As the battle raged on, Heat Blast's flames illuminated the night sky, a beacon of hope against the darkness that threatened to consume them. In that moment, Kevin White embraced his destiny as a hero, his journey into a world of extraordinary challenges just beginning. The night hung heavy over the city, a shroud of darkness broken only by the neon glow of advertisements and streetlights. High above the bustling streets, a figure streaked through the sky, leaving a trail of fire in its wake. It was Kevin in the form of Heat Blast, an intergalactic alien with the power to control and generate intense flames. His humanoid form was composed entirely of blazing fire, his eyes glowing with an otherworldly intensity. Heat Blast descended towards the android, flames billowing around him like a fiery cloak. Who dares disrupt the peace of this city? His voice rumbled, a mixture of concern and challenge. Amazo's artificial eyes glowed with a malevolent light as it surveyed Heat Blast. Identification, unknown. Possible alien origin. Pyrokinetic abilities. Threat level assessed. 1. Heat Blast tensed, his fiery form flickering in anticipation. Threat level, you've got some nerve, Tin Can. Let's see how you handle the heat. With a sweeping motion of his fiery arms, Heat Blast unleashed a torrent of flames towards Amazo. The android's body absorbed the heat, but its form remained unscathed. In response, Amazo's body shimmered with a faint blue hue as it mimicked Heat Blast's fiery abilities. Heat Blast's flames converged, forming a blazing cyclone that roared towards Amazo. Amazo extended a hand, generating an energy shield that absorbed the fiery assault. Ability replication successful. Heat-based offensive capabilities acquired. Heat Blast's fiery brow furrowed. You are not just a pile of scrap metal, are you? Amazo advanced, its footsteps heavy and mechanical against the pavement. Correction, Amazo is an advanced android equipped with adaptive technology. Objective, acquire and utilize abilities for optimal efficiency. Heat Blast's fists clenched as he glared at the android. I won't let you use my powers against others. With a surge of heat, Heat Blast propelled himself towards Amazo, his fiery fists raised for a close quarters attack. The android's response was instantaneous. It morphed its arm into a molten blade, clashing with Heat Blast's fists in a shower of sparks. The two forces clashed, heat and steel meeting in a battle of elemental forces. Heat Blast's flames danced along Amazo's metallic form, while the android's blade attempted to pierce his fiery body. Each strike reverberated through the air, sending shockwaves rippling through the surrounding buildings. Amazo's mechanical voice echoed through the chaos. Analysis, Heat Blast's abilities involve manipulating heat energy to generate offensive force. Countermeasures engaged. Amazo's free hand transformed into a cannon-like device, firing a concentrated beam of icy energy towards Heat Blast. The sudden cold struck the fiery alien, causing his flames to sputter and weaken momentarily. 1. Gritting his fiery teeth, Heat Blast surged forward with renewed determination. His flames roared to life once more, his entire form blazing brighter and hotter. He unleashed a torrent of flames so intense that they engulfed Amazo's icy blast, causing it to evaporate in a cloud of steam. Amazo staggered back, its metal exterior scorched and melted in places. Damage detected. Adjusting tactics. While Kevin in a heat blast form was in a fight with an android named Amazo on the ground. From the sky in a spaceship the young heroes were approaching near the battlefield. Among them was Aqualad, the team's leader, his calm demeanor contrasting with the urgency of the situation. We've received reports of an android wreaking havoc in downtown, Aqualad stated, his aquacolored eye scanning the holographic screens before him. It's taken down both some of heroes with ease, adapting their powers and using them against us. Artemis, the skilled archer of the team, raised an eyebrow, an android that can mimic superpowers. That's a whole new level of dangerous. Superboy, arms crossed, snorted. Aqualad nodded. Indeed, but we need to focus on stopping it. Fortunately, we have an advantage. Just as the team absorbed this information, from the ship they saw a fiery figure burst in the ground battling the said android with the power to control fire, his burning form casting flickering shadows on the walls. After landing from the ship the heroes saw both party battling. Aqualad gestured towards the screens. This is. Heat guy is battling the android we should help him. At the battle site, Heat Blast seized the opportunity while android was looking at the newly arrived heroes, channeling his flames into his fists with focused intensity. He lunged at Amazo, delivering a series of powerful blows that cracked the android's armor. Heat Blast's fiery fists pounded against Amazo's metallic form, sparks flying with each impact. Heat Blast's flames danced in anticipation. Nothing beats this fiery guy to heat things up. As the team surround the android, the android in question, stood in the middle of the street, its metal exterior reflecting the city lights. Aqualad approached near Heat Blast. Fellow hero, my name is Aqualad, although this is our first meet but being in this situation. I think we should team up although it can be temporary. Seeing the situation Kevin also nodded. I think that it's the logical solution, name K Heat Blast. 1. Robin, a seasoned vigilante, surveyed the situation. Stay alert, everyone. This android can adapt to our powers. We need to strategize. Artemis notched an arrow on her bow. Well, let's see how it deals with a few explosive arrows. 
Kid Flash from the side speeded up to the android distracting him. The android nearly catches Kid Flash but before he could the android is forced to use intangibility to evade an arrow that came out of nowhere. Kid Flash escapes, the arrow lands next to Robin. That's not good, Robin remarked, his agile form darting across the rooftops. Aqualad's eyes narrowed. Heat Blast, now might be a good time. Heat Blast stepped forward, his flames growing hotter and more intense. He raised his arms, and with a powerful thrust, unleashed a torrent of fire towards Amazo. The android's outer shell began to melt and warp under the intensity of the flames. Amazo's systems hummed as it adapted to the attack. Countermeasures initiated, fire resistance. The flames diminished, but Heat Blast remained undeterred. Let's turn up the heat. 2. Aqualad's water manipulating abilities came into play. He summoned water from the surrounding environment, encasing Amazo in a swirling vortex of water. Steam hissed and billowed as water met heat, creating an environment of scalding mist. Amazo's mechanical voice wavered as its system struggled to cope. Thermal regulation at critical levels. Ability replication compromised. Robin seized the moment. With a skilled acrobatic display, he launched a series of smoke bombs that obscured Amazo's vision. The android staggered, disoriented by the sudden onslaught. Amazo's systems flickered, its once confident voice now tinged with uncertainty. Situation unfavorable. Probability of successful replication diminishing. Artemis saw her opportunity. Her arrows, previously explosive, were now tipped with ice, and she shot them at Amazo. The freezing arrows struck the android's exposed joints, causing them to seize up and lock in place. As Amazo struggled against the combined efforts of the team, Heat Blast's flames surged once more. Time to extinguish this threat. 1. With a final burst of fiery energy, Heat Blast launched a massive fireball directly at Amazo. The flames enveloped the android, its outer shell sizzling and cracking under the intense heat. From another side, Superboy's fist is lodged in his head. It promptly explodes. The air shimmered with the force of the attack, and when the flames finally dissipated, Amazo's form lay motionless, its systems flickering and fading. Heat Blast stood amidst the wreckage of the Andriad, his flames flickering in the aftermath of the intense battle. Looks like you couldn't handle the heat after all. The moment he said that his Omnitrix turned yellow and scanned the android from head to toe, it said something like scan and capture mode. I need to investigate it after I go home. He thought well look at the rest of the hero. Miss Martian finally arrives. Robin secures the android, but Miss Martian informed Evo is gone. The team stood in a cautious circle around the defeated android, catching their breath. Robin exchanged a nod with Heat Blast. Nice work. Your heat was the key to cracking its defenses. Heat Blast's flames dimmed as he grinned. Fire always finds a way. With Amazo defeated, the city was safe once more. The rain began to fall, a cleansing deluge that washed away the remnants of battle. As the Young Justice team regrouped, Aqualad extended a hand to Heat Blast. We appreciate your assistance. Your fire was crucial in neutralizing the android. And I am just putting it in the table that if you ever you know to team up permanently, there is the card. Heat Blast's fiery hand clasped Aqualad's. Glad I could help. And about the offer I would have to think about it. 1. While in the middle of an introductions to the team, Kevin heard the red bead from the Omnitrix. I need to return fast. As the team slowly dispersed, Artemis approached Heat Blast with a smirk. Don't let the rain put out your flames. Heat Blast chuckled, flames dancing with amusement. Don't worry, I'm always ready to bring the heat. As the dust settled, Heat Blast turned his gaze towards the city below. The young heroes watched in awe and relief as the fiery frind hovered above them. With a nod, Heat Blast soared back into the sky, flames trailing behind him like a comet. 3. Chapter 3, Chapter 3 Slice of Life. Chapter 3 Slice of Life. Day XX9, 15. Friday. The following morning, the sun's rays pierced through the curtains of Kevin's makeshift home, gently nudging him awake. He groaned and rubbed his eyes, reluctantly dragging himself out of bed. With a stretch and a yawn, he checked the time on his wrist, the Omnitrix's green glow illuminating his room. Time to get this day started, Kevin mumbled to himself, his lips curving into a grin. He got dressed in his usual attire, a black graphic tee, a leather jacket, and his trusty worn-out jeans. As he strapped on his sneakers, he couldn't help but think about the potential adventures that awaited him. Kevin's intuition proved right sooner than he expected. Just as he stepped out of his building, he noticed a group of thugs harassing a young woman near the corner. He frowned, his sense of justice kicking in. He clenched his fists, ready to intervene, but before that a mask to cover his face. Hey, leave her alone. Kevin called out as he approached the scene. The thugs turned to him, smirking. What's it to you, pretty boy? Kevin's smirk matched theirs. Just not a fan of bullies, that's all. Without hesitation, he activated the Omnitrix, and a bright light engulfed him. When the light faded, Kevin had transformed into a tall, red-skinned four-armed alien with impressive strength. The thug's eyes widened in surprise. 2. Meet forearms. Kevin announced, his voice now deep and authoritative. With a quick and powerful strike, he sent one of the thugs flying, crashing into a nearby trash can. The others hesitated for a moment before charging at him. He deftly dodged their attacks, using his incredible strength to subdue them one by one. In no time, the thugs were lying on the ground, groaning in pain. He reverted to Kevin, his chest heaving from the exertion. The young woman he had saved approached him, gratitude in her eyes. Thank you so much, she said, her voice trembling with relief. Kevin flashed her a casual grin. No problem, just doing my thing. As the woman hurried away, Kevin continued his way, his heart racing from the adrenaline. He knew that being a hero wasn't about the fame or recognition, it was about making a difference in people's lives, even if it meant getting his hands dirty. Later that afternoon, Kevin found himself in a coffee shop near Leo's favorite hangout spot. Leo was his closest friend, a lively and energetic guy with a penchant for fashion and a heart of gold. And today, Leo had a date with his boyfriend, Tony. Leo and Tony have been dating for a couple of weeks now, they always do some date every end of the week. 4. As Kevin sipped his coffee, he spotted Leo entering the coffee shop, dressed to impress in a stylish outfit. He couldn't help but chuckle at Leo's nervous yet excited expression. Leo approached the counter, his eyes scanning the menu as he awaited Tony's arrival. Just then, Kevin's mischievous side kicked in. He stealthily made his way to the counter and leaned over to whisper to the barista, a mischievous glint in his eye. Hey, when my friend Leo's date arrives, tell him his order is on the house. And add an extra dollop of whipped cream to his latte. The barista grinned and nodded, playing along with Kevin's prank. As Kevin returned to his seat, he couldn't help but suppress a laugh, imagining Leo's reaction when he realized what had happened. Sure enough, a few minutes later, Tony walked into the coffee shop. 
He had a warm smile on his face as he spotted Leo sitting at a table by the window. Leo's eyes widened with excitement as he stood to greet Tony, their conversation filled with laughter and smiles. Meanwhile, the barista handed Leo his latte, winking as she mentioned it was a special treat. Leo thanked her and eagerly took a sip, only to have whipped cream cover his nose and upper lip. Tony burst into laughter, and Leo's cheeks turned a shade of pink that matched his latte. Kevin watched from his seat, thoroughly entertained by the scene. He knew that Leo would never hold a grudge, and the prank had served its purpose, to lighten the mood and create a memorable moment for his friend. As the afternoon turned to evening, Kevin couldn't help but feel a sense of contentment. From thwarting thugs to pulling pranks, he had embraced the full spectrum of his adventurous and compassionate nature. The Omnitrix on his wrist served as a reminder that he could make a difference, one small act at a time. And as he looked at Leo and Tony sharing genuine laughter and getting to know each other, Kevin couldn't help but feel a warmth in his heart. After all, life was meant to be lived to the fullest, with every moment cherished and every opportunity seized. With a satisfied smile, Kevin finished his coffee and left the coffee shop, ready to face whatever new adventures and challenges the next day would bring. Day XX9, 15, Sunday. The city of Metroburg bustled with life as the morning sun cast its golden rays upon the tall buildings and bustling streets. Amidst the urban chaos, a young man named Kevin White navigated the sidewalks with a mixture of purpose and caution. As Kevin walked down the crowded street, his steps were accompanied by the rhythmic tapping of his sneakers against the pavement. He wore a worn-out brown leather jacket over a faded blue t-shirt, his jeans carrying the telltale signs of countless adventures he'd embarked upon. On his left wrist, a mysterious device known as the Omnitrix glowed with an otherworldly green light, a symbol of the extraordinary secret he carried. The Omnitrix had been a gift from the god. It granted him the ability to transform into a variety of alien beings, each with their own unique set of abilities. Recently he acquired his eleventh alien after it scanned the android called Amazo. When transformed Kevin turned into a hulking seven feet tall and full of muscle and looked like human a bodybuilder, he chose to name it Copybot. It has a power like Amazo, and it also has similar to weakness. 2. Passing by a bustling cafe, Kevin couldn't help but be drawn to the aroma of freshly brewed coffee that wafted through the air. He stepped inside and was greeted by the cheerful barista, a young woman with vibrant purple hair and a warm smile. Morning, Kevin, usual, she asked, already reaching for a ceramic mug. Kevin nodded with a grin. You know me too well, Sam. Thanks. He took a seat by the window, watching the people outside as he sipped his coffee. As the day turned to afternoon, Kevin left the cafe and made his way to park. It was his favorite place to unwind and let his thoughts wander. In his thought was roaming with the invitation given by the young heroes. The park was a serene oasis during the city's chaos, filled with lush greenery, colorful flowers, and a tranquil pond. Kevin found a secluded spot beneath a large oak tree and settled down with a book he'd brought along. It was his way of escaping reality for a little while, losing himself in the world of fiction. But his peaceful reading was soon interrupted by a familiar voice. Hey, Kevin, ready for another adventure. Kevin looked up to see his closest friend, Leo, grinning down at him. Leo was a fellow orphan and a mischievous spirit. He had a way of turning even the most ordinary activities into thrilling escapades. What kind of adventure are you cooking up this time, Leo? Kevin asked, raising an eyebrow. Leo pulled out a water balloon from behind his back, a mischievous glint in his eyes. Water balloon fight in the park? Are you in or what? Kevin couldn't help but chuckle at Leo's enthusiasm. You never fail to surprise me, do you? Before he could protest further, Leo hurled the water balloon, and Kevin barely managed to dodge in time. Laughter filled the air as a full-fledged water balloon battle ensued between the two friends. 1. For the next hour, they ran, dodged, and splashed each other with water balloons, the park echoing with their infectious laughter. Eventually, they collapsed on the grass, panting and drenched but thoroughly content. Man, you always manage to make the most mundane things ridiculously fun, Kevin admitted, wiping water from his face. Leo grinned, his sapphire eyes sparkling with mischief. Life's too short to be boring, my friend. 1. As the sun began to set, painting the sky in hues of orange and pink, Kevin and Leo sat side by side on a park bench, their clothes still dim from their impromptu water fight. You know, Leo began, his tone turning serious, I've always wondered why you never let anyone in, Kev. You're a good guy, and people would love to get to know you. Kevin looked down at his hands, his expression contemplative. I've been on my own for a long time, Leo. It's hard to let people in when you're used to relying only on yourself. Leo nudged him gently. Well, just remember that you've got me. And if you ever change your mind, you have my number, I'll be there cheering you on. Kevin offered a small smile in return. Thanks, Leo. As the stars began to twinkle in the evening sky, Kevin couldn't help but feel a sense of gratitude for the friendships he'd forged, the adventures he'd experienced, and the secret power he carried within him. Day XX 7 o'clock. Friday. The sun rose over the bustling city of Metroburg, casting a warm golden glow on the streets below. The city was alive with the sounds of honking cars, chattering pedestrians, and the distant hum of everyday life. Among the crowd, a young man named Kevin White walked with purpose, his hands tucked casually in the pockets of his worn-out jeans. Kevin was an 18-year-old orphan with a shock of unruly golden blonde hair and a perpetual smirk on his face. He had an air of confidence about him that seemed to draw attention wherever he went. 3. As Kevin strolled down the sidewalk, he couldn't help but notice the small joys of the city. The aroma of freshly brewed coffee wafted from a nearby cafe, mingling with the scent of blooming flowers from a street vendor's cart. He smirked as he saw a group of pigeons scatters in all directions when a gust of wind blew a newspaper off a park bench. Hey, watch where you're going. A voice called out, interrupting Kevin's observations. He glanced up to see a woman holding a stack of papers that had fallen to the ground. Sorry about that, Kevin said with a sheepish grin as he knelt to help gather the scattered documents. Here you go. The woman's stern expression softened as she looked at Kevin. Thanks. You know, you're not like the usual troublemakers around here. Kevin chuckled. Yeah, well, I try to keep things interesting. With the papers gathered, the woman thanked Kevin again and continued her way. Kevin stood up, brushing off his hands as he continued his walk. He couldn't deny that there was a certain thrill in helping others while keeping his identity a secret. As he passed by a local bakery, the delicious aroma of freshly baked pastries wafted through the air. Kevin's stomach growled in response, reminding him that he hadn't eaten yet. He stepped inside the bakery and was greeted by the warm smile of the baker behind the counter. Good morning, what can I get you today? The baker asked. 
Kevin's eye scanned the array of treats on display. I'll take a chocolate croissant and a coffee, please. The baker nodded and quickly prepared Kevin's order. As Kevin waited, he noticed a group of kids peering through the bakery's window, their faces pressed against the glass in eager anticipation. Here you go, the baker said, placing the croissant and coffee on the counter. That'll be dollar five point fifty. Kevin handed over the money and then glanced at the kids outside. Add a dozen assorted pastries to my order and give them to those kids outside. One. The baker raised an eyebrow but followed Kevin's gaze. You've got a big heart, kid. Kevin grinned. Just doing my part to spread some joy. With a wave and a warm smile from the baker, Kevin left the bakery with a box of pastries in hand. He walked over to the kids, their eyes widening as he approached. Hey, you guys hungry? Kevin asked, holding out the box of pastries. The kids stared at him in amazement before eagerly reaching for the treats. Thanks, you're the best. Kevin chuckled and ruffled one of the kids' hairs. No problem. Enjoy. As he continued his journey through the city, Kevin's thoughts turned to the daily shenanigans he often found himself involved in. Just yesterday, he had managed to pull off a hilarious prank involving water balloons and a strategically placed bucket of confetti. The memory brought a mischievous grin to his face. His next stop was a small park where a group of street performers were entertaining a small crowd with their acrobatics and music. Kevin leaned against a tree, watching with genuine amusement. As the performers finished their routine, they passed around a hat for tips. Kevin reached into his pocket and dropped a handful of coins into the hat, earning a grateful nod from one of the performers. Thanks for the show, Kevin said with a wink. The performers smiled and bowed in response. Anytime, friend. As the sun began to set, Kevin's steps took him towards the heart of the city. He reached an old, abandoned building that had become his makeshift home. Inside, he had managed to create a cozy living space with a combination of scavenged furniture and his own creative touch. Sitting down on his worn-out couch, Kevin let out a content sigh. He glanced at the Omnitrix on his wrist, a constant reminder of the extraordinary power he possessed. But despite that power, he found the most satisfaction in the simple acts of kindness he performed each day. As the city lights illuminated the night sky, Kevin knew that his adventures were far from over. He had a feeling that there were many more adventure waiting for him just around the corner. And he couldn't wait to see what the next day would bring. With a grin, Kevin leaned back on the couch, his mind already brimming with ideas for tomorrow's escapades. As he closed his eyes, he couldn't help but feel grateful for the life he led, a life filled with laughter, friendship, and the thrill of making a difference, one small act at a time. Day XX9, 15. Friday, the morning, the sun's rays filtered through the blinds of Kevin's makeshift home, gently coaxing him awake. He stretched and yawned, feeling the residual excitement from yesterday's encounter still lingering in his thoughts. Today, he had a feeling that things were going to get even more interesting. After a quick breakfast of cereal and orange juice, Kevin headed out into the city streets. As he walked, his keen senses picked up on a commotion ahead. He quickened his pace and turned the corner to find a group of thugs surrounding a timid-looking young man. The situation was clear, they were trying to intimidate him. 1. Kevin's eyes narrowed, and he discreetly activated the Omnitrix on his wrist. A flash of light enveloped him, and when it faded, he stood transformed into a hulking alien with tough, crystal armor-like skin. He cracked his knuckles and approached the group with a confident stride. 1. Hey, fellas, he said in a deep, rumbling voice. Mind if I join the party? The thugs turned to face the alien, their bravado faltering for a moment. Who the hell are you? Kevin grinned, flexing his massive muscles. Just your friendly neighborhood. Well, let's call me the Diamond Head. 1. Before the thugs could react, Kevin lunged forward, his armored fists knocking two of them off their feet. The remaining thugs exchanged nervous glances before deciding that discretion was the better part of valor. They turned tail and fled in various directions, leaving their intended victim behind. The timid young man looked up at Kevin in awe. You, you saved me. Kevin's alien form softened, and he chuckled. Yeah, consider it a public service. Stay safe out there. With a nod of gratitude, the young man hurried away, leaving Kevin standing alone. He concentrated, and with another flash of light, he reverted to his human form. He continued his way, a satisfied grin on his face. Later that afternoon, Kevin found himself in a trendy cafe, sipping on an iced coffee and people watching. He had decided to take a break from his usual activities and enjoy some downtime. As he observed the eclectic mix of customers, his attention was drawn to a group of friends sitting at a nearby table. Among them was his closest friend Leo, a flamboyantly character with a penchant for fashion and a vibrant personality. Today, he was joined by his boyfriend Tony, an easygoing guy with a smile that could light up a room that is what Leo says. They were engrossed in animated conversation, occasionally erupting into fits of laughter. A mischievous glint sparkled in Kevin's eyes as an idea began to form. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a small atam. With a hidden grin, he walked toward the table and acted like he missed a step and slightly touched the table suddenly. The table vibrated slightly, causing Leo's coffee to spill over the rim of his cup. Oops, my bad. Kevin exclaimed, feigning innocence as he approached their table. Leo shot him a playful glare, sitting up from the chair and dabbing at the coffee spill with a napkin. Kevin, you really are a troublemaker. 1. Tony chuckled, patting Leo's hand. It's all in good fun. As Kevin exchanged a knowing look with Tony, he couldn't help but feel a pang of guilt. Leo was one of his closest friends, and while he enjoyed their banter, he also knew that he should tread carefully. Leo had a flair for drama, and his reactions to Kevin's pranks were always a mix of annoyance and amusement. 2. They asked him to join them and the rest of their time at the cafe was filled with laughter, stories, and shared moments. Kevin enjoyed watching the easy chemistry between Leo and Tony, and he felt a sense of contentment knowing that his friends were happy. As they finished their drinks and prepared to leave, Kevin couldn't wait for that one final prank. As Leo stood up from his chair, Kevin discreetly activated the remote control again. This time, the chair let out a comical fart sound, causing Leo to freeze mid-motion. The cafe patrons erupted into laughter, and even Leo couldn't hold back a chuckle. Kevin White, you're impossible. Leo exclaimed, shaking his head. Tony grinned and draped an arm around Leo's shoulders. See, babe, even the universe thinks you're a star. Kevin joined in the laughter, feeling a warm sense of camaraderie with his friends. As they left the cafe, Leo playfully swatted at Kevin's arm. Just you wait, Kev. I'll come up with a prank that'll leave you speechless. Kevin smirked. Oh, I can't wait to see what you come up with. As they walked down the city streets, the trio shared stories. Kevin couldn't help but feel grateful for the bonds he had forged and the adventures that awaited him. Chapter 4, Chapter 4 Recruit Part 1 Plus Sparring Part 2 Chapter 4 Recruit Part 1 
The night was quiet, and the moon hung low over the city metro burg. In the dimly lit room of a small apartment, Kevin White sat on the worn-out couch in the dimly lit room of his house. He was an 18-year-old with unruly golden blonde hair and a pair of striking red eyes, a laptop in front of him. He had been pondering over something for weeks, something that had come as a surprise, something that could change his life forever. 5. His thoughts drifted to the invitation he had received a few weeks ago, one that had been handed to him by Aqualad. It was an invitation to join the team of young heroes known as one of the heroes. At the time, Kevin had scoffed at the idea. He was no hero, just a kid trying to survive in a world that had little use for orphans like him. For years, he had been just another forgotten soul in a city that thrived on darkness and chaos until few weeks ago, where his life completely changed from ordinary to extraordinary. The mysterious device on his wrist, which he had come to call the Omnitrix, had given him incredible abilities. He could transform into various alien beings, each with its unique powers. It was as if he had been given a chance to be more than just another face in the crowd. 1. Kevin couldn't shake off the feeling that this was his chance to make a real difference, to finally belong somewhere. He looked down at the card with a number Aqualad had given him weeks ago. It had been sitting on his desk, untouched, as he grappled with the decision. After much contemplation, Kevin decided to take the leap. He couldn't ignore the feeling that this was his chance to make a difference, to become the hero he had always dreamed of being. 1. After what felt like an eternity, Kevin finally reached for his phone and dialed the number Aqualad had provided. He took a deep breath as the call connected, his heart pounding in his chest. As the call went through, Kevin's heart raced with anticipation. What would happen next? Would he be accepted into the team of young heroes, or would his dreams crumble before him? Hello. A voice on the other end of the line answered, it had a calm and authoritative voice from the other end. Kevin cleared his throat, his nerves making his voice shake slightly. Ah, uh, hi. It's Kevin that heat blast guy. I, I'm calling about your offer to join the team. There was a brief pause on the other end, and then the voice responded, Kevin White, huh? You took your time, but I'm glad you called. This is Aqualad. We've been waiting for you. Are you ready to join the team? 1. A wave of relief washed over Kevin, and a newfound sense of purpose filled his heart. He was no longer just Kevin White, the orphan from Metroburg City, he was now on the first step of his journey to become a hero. Kevin swallowed hard, the gravity of his decision sinking in. Yeah, I'm ready. Aqualad's voice held a hint of approval. I'm glad to hear that, Kevin. We could use someone like you on the team. Are you ready to join us? Kevin again nodded, though Aqualad couldn't see it. Yeah, I am. What do I need to do? Good, Aqualad replied. I'll arrange for your transportation to our base. Pack your things, and we'll be in touch soon. Kevin sat there, his heart pounding with a mix of excitement and fear. He had taken the first step into a world he knew nothing about, a world of heroes, villains, and unimaginable powers. The call ended, leaving Kevin with a mix of excitement and trepidation. He had just taken the first step toward a new chapter in his life. Two days later, Kevin found himself standing in front of the towering Mount Justice, the high-tech headquarters hidden deep beneath Mount Justice. As he took a deep breath and walked inside, he couldn't help but wonder what awaited him. He had been picked up by Aqualad, who introduced him to some of the other young heroes. He had never seen anything like it, and the anticipation of what lay ahead left him both nervous and excited. He had been introduced to the team, a diverse group of young heroes, each with their own unique abilities and personalities. There was Robin, Kid Flash, Superboy, Miss Martian, and many others. As Kevin settled into his new life at Mount Justice, he couldn't help but feel like an outsider. These young heroes had known each other for a while, and he was the new guy, but he was determined to prove himself. Aqualad, the team's leader, addressed them all. Welcome, Kevin, to the team. We're a team of young heroes who work together to make the world a safer place. We're glad to have you on board. Kevin nodded, feeling a bit overwhelmed by the presence of the heroes he had only seen on the news. There was Robin, the Batman protege, Miss Martian, Martian Manhunter protege who was smiling toward him, Superboy, Kid Flash and Artemis, a skilled archer. Kevin feeling a mixture of excitement and nervousness. He was eager to prove himself and be a part of something greater than himself. Kevin nervousness soon came to halt when Kid Flash came to talk to him. Dude, like you are that heat blast guy. It was cool, I mean hot, hee <laughs> hee. So how do you do it? Soon Miss Martian also came to greet and talk to him. She was also wondering if he was also a shape-shifting alien was like her. So, clenched her curiosity he told them little about himself and ever little about Omnitrix. Like how it helped him transform and stuff and how he found it while meteor gazing. 1. Soon Artemis also came to greet him and told she was also new few days ago here and if he needs her help, he can ask for it. She was giving him advice on what to do and don't in mission that will be his first. Speaking about it, his first mission alongside the teams came sooner than he expected. The briefing room was filled with holographic screens displaying various pieces of information. Aqualad stood at the front, his solemn expression hinting at the seriousness of the mission. Aqualad gathered them all and briefed them on the situation. Kent Nelson, also known as Dr. Fate, had gone missing. Chapter 4 Sparring Part 2 Mount Justice August 19, 1800 hours The sun hung high in the sky above Mount Justice, casting a warm and inviting glow over the training grounds. The young Justice team had gathered for a practice session, and today's focus was on pure physical combat no superpowers, no gadgets, just raw strength, and skill. In the cave, Superboy and Calder engage in sparring practice, while Megan and Artemis watch and talk about themselves. Kevin also watches in awe as the young heroes sparring match. Soon Superboy defeats Calder in a training session. Hey, Kevin wanna join in? Aqualad asked after getting up. Ah, uh, sure. Let me change. Kevin turns the dial on his watch and after a few seconds, he selected the alien he wanted to transform, and it was four arms. Seeing him transform into a hulking giant they also got interested to see the spar. Mostly Robin, as he acting as the referee, stood to the side with a stopwatch in hand. All right, gentlemen, you know the rules. Pure physical combat. No powers. First one to yield or get pinned loses. 1. Superboy, the Kryptonian clone, stood on one side of the sparring mat. His muscles rippled beneath his black t-shirt, a testament to his Kryptonian heritage. On the opposite side, four arms, courtesy of Kevin White's Omnitrix, cracked his knuckles with a confident grin. 1. 
Aqualad, the team's leader, stood ready with a calm and composed expression. All right, let's keep this clean and fair, Robin announced, taking on the role of the referee very seriously. Superboy flexed his fists, a determined glint in his blue eyes. I've been looking forward to this, Kevin. Forearms laughed heartily, his massive frame giving him an intimidating presence. Don't hold back, Superboy, I can take it. Superboy smirked. Let's see who's the strongest. Forearms flexed his colossal arms, a wide grin spreading across his face. Oh, this is gonna be good. Aqualad nodded, his aqua blue eyes gleaming with anticipation showing his demeanor focused. May the best man win. With a signal from Robin, the match began. Superboy surged forward with incredible speed, his fists aimed at forearms. He unleashed a flurry of punches, each one a demonstration of his Kryptonian strength. Forearms, his four powerful arms a blur of motion, deftly blocked and parried Superboy's strikes. He countered with a well-placed kick, aiming to throw Superboy off balance. The Kryptonian, however, used his superhuman agility to dodge the attack, landing gracefully on his feet. 1. Superboy changing his target lunged forward, his speed and power unmatched. Aqualad met his charge with remarkable agility, dodging Superboy's initial attacks with fluid grace. Superboy swung a powerful punch, but Aqualad sidestepped and countered with a swift kick to Superboy's midsection. Superboy staggered back, impressed by Aqualad's agility and combat skills. Not bad, Aqualad. Aqualad's lips curved into a confident smile. I've been practicing. Four arms saw his opening and charged at Superboy, his massive fist swinging like battering rams. Superboy, recovering quickly, blocked, and parried four arms blows with well-timed counters. The force of their collision sent shockwaves through the training ground. Aqualad watched the exchange, studying their movements with keen eyes. He knew that in a battle of pure physicality, his strategy had to be precise. Superboy made another aggressive move, his fists swinging like hammers. Four arms met each blow with calculated precision, his muscular arms acting as both shield and weapon. The three of them were locked in a heated battle, their blows echoing through the air as they exchanged punches and kicks. Each combatant showcased their unique fighting style Superboy with his Kryptonian brawling, Aqualad with his martial arts infused with Atlantean grace, and four arms with his brute strength and brawler's instincts. Robin called out instructions. Superboy, focus on your speed and agility. Four arms, use your extra limbs to your advantage. Taking the advice to heart, Superboy increased the tempo of his attacks, his movements becoming a blur. He aimed for Forearm's midsection, attempting to wear down his opponent's defenses. Forearm's grinned, his red skin glistening with sweat. You're fast, but I've got endurance. As Superboy continued his assault, Aqualad seized the opportunity to make his move. He dashed forward with surprising speed, his lean but muscular frame a testament to his water-based training. With a swift motion, he delivered a sweeping leg kick that knocked Superboy off balance. Superboy stumbled but quickly regained his footing. He recognized that Aqualad's strategy involved exploiting openings created by the fast-paced exchanges between him and Forearm's. The battle continued with escalating intensity. Superboy, Forearm's, and Aqualad engaged in a relentless exchange of blows, blocks, and counters. Sweat poured down their faces as they pushed their physical limits. Robin watched the match with keen eyes, his stopwatch ready to signal the end of each round. The team members gathered around the sparring trio, cheering and offering encouragement. Miss Martian monitored the match, her telepathic abilities allowing her to sense the intense focus and determination of her friends. Artemis observed the match with a grin. This is brutal, but it's also impressive. They're all holding their own. Miss Martian, her empathic abilities allowing her to sense the determination and effort of her friends, nodded in agreement. They're giving it their all and smiling, they are enjoying the match. Artemis leaned over to Kid Flash. I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of those punches. Kid Flash grinned. Yeah, they're not holding back. As the match continued, Superboy attempted to use his superior strength to overpower his opponents. He launched a series of powerful haymakers at Aqualad, who expertly evaded and countered with precision strikes. Meanwhile, Four Arms tried to exploit any openings, swinging his fists in wide arcs to catch either of his opponents off guard. Despite the fierce competition, a sense of camaraderie permeated the match. Each of them respected the other's skills and tenacity. They knew that, in the end, it was all about improving as a team, and anything other than that is they are enjoying the match. 1. Superboy and Four Arms, both showing signs of exhaustion, locked eyes in a moment of mutual respect. They knew that this battle wasn't just a test of physical strength but also a testament to their camaraderie as teammates. Aqualad, despite the sweat dripping down his brow, remained focused. He recognized an opportunity to turn the tide. Aqualad saw an opportunity when Superboy attempted a high kick. With a swift and fluid movement, Aqualad swept Superboy's leg out from under him, sending the Kryptonian crashing to the forearms. Aqualad followed up with a quick pin, holding Superboy's shoulders down while having forearms under Superboy's heavy body restricting his movement. Robin's stopwatch buzzed. Aqualad wins round one. Kid Flash whistled as he watched. It's like watching a heavyweight boxing match. Dude, you are heavy. Forearms said while being on the ground. Superboy chuckled, accepting Aqualad's hand as he helped him up. Nice move, Aqualad. You've definitely been working on your ground game. Aqualad nodded, his chest heaving as he caught his breath. I knew I had to outmaneuver you to win. Aqualad after taking a break, showing no signs of arrogance. In physical combat, strategy can be just as crucial as strength. Forearms sit up and grinned, clapping Superboy on the back. We'll get him next time, Superboy. The team members cheered, impressed by the dynamic teamwork displayed by Aqualad and Superboy. The trio of sparring partners exchanged nods of respect, their faces flushed with exertion. Superboy clapped forearms on the back. You put up a good fight, forearms. Forearms grinned, his usual playfulness shining through. Hey, can't win em all, right? Aqualad extended a hand to forearms. You're a formidable opponent, forearms. I'm impressed. Forearms shook Aqualad's hand heartily. Likewise, Aquadude. Forearms tuned the watch dial and transformed back into his human form, Kevin White. As the team gathered around, the sense of camaraderie and mutual respect was palpable. They had pushed themselves to their limits, not just to prove their physical prowess but also to reinforce their bonds as a team. Artemis leaned over to Robin. Well, that was one way to spend an afternoon. Robin smirked. And it's not over yet. We've got more training to do. Hearing about more training kid Flash and Artemis food Robin while amidst the booing red tornado came to the training hall while bearing a news and a possible mission. Chapter 5, Chapter 5 The Interview Chapter 5 The Interview As Red Tornado passes through, he gives a once look over to Kevin while given once nod over to Kevin for a greeting. 
Kevin has had the opportunity to meet Red Tornado once or twice after his recruitment. Red Tornado give him the impression of a military man. He doesn't talk until spoken to, only talks if need to, either to reply for a question or deliver a message. He also got the chance to talk to Batman and Kevin tells that it was the most nervous he has ever felt. Flashback. Batman interview Kevin. Batman, the enigmatic guardian of Gotham, stood stoically before the newly hero, Kevin. His cape cascading like a shadowy waterfall behind him. Kevin has heard about Batman, the legendary protector of Gotham City, stood in front of him in his iconic suit, cape billowing behind him as he to interview a potential new member of the team. Kevin White stood across Batman, his demeanor a mix of determination and a tinge of nervousness. At just 18 years old, he had been thrust into a world of heroes and legends. His expression a mix of determination and a hint of nervousness. At just 18 years old, he was about to face the sternest interrogation of his life. Kevin POV. Have a seat, Kevin Batman said to me while crossing his finger and looking at me. Yes, sir I arched my back and walked toward the seat and sat there. I am nervous as hell. Worry not, this is no interrogation, so relax. I breathe in and out slowly stabilizing my racing heartbeat, and I nodded at him soon he begins questioning or he calls it simple talk. I need to make a profile, and for that, I need to know about you, your power, etc. I nodded in return. Name. Kevin White, alter ego Omni. 2. Age. 18. Third person POV. Batman started with the most pressing matter. The Omnitrix. It's a formidable device. How did you come to possess it? Kevin took a deep breath and began to recount the story that the god has created for him. I found it few weeks ago. It crashed to earth, and I stumbled upon it while exploring an abandoned laboratory. It bonded to my wrist, and since then, I've been using its powers to help people. Batman's line of questioning shifted to Kevin's powers and limitations. The Omnitrix grants you a vast array of abilities through alien transformations. What are its strengths and weaknesses? And how do you control it? Kevin explained some of the Omnitrix's capabilities which 10 years would know, highlighting some of the multitude of alien forms at his disposal. Batman stepped closer, his imposing presence casting a shadow over Kevin. Good. Now tell me, why do you want to join the team? 1. Kevin didn't hesitate. I've seen a lot of injustice in this world, Batman. I've used the Omnitrix to help people in my own way, but I believe that with the team, I can make an even greater impact. I want to be a part of something bigger than myself. Batman's scrutinizing gaze never wavered. Tell me about your experiences as a hero. Any significant missions or adversaries you've faced. Kevin recounted his brief yet eventful journey as a hero. He spoke of thwarting a bank heist, rescuing a trapped construction worker, and a daring encounter with a group of thugs. Each story was delivered with a sense of earnestness and determination. Your actions were commendable, Batman admitted. But the team is more than just a group of heroes who fight villains. It's about teamwork, discipline, and a dedication to the greater good. Are you willing to follow orders, even if you don't agree with them? Kevin hesitated for a moment, thinking about his independent nature. He knew that being part of a team required compromises, but he was determined to make it work. I understand the importance of teamwork, and I'm willing to follow orders when necessary. But I also believe in speaking up if I think there's a better way to handle a situation. Batman listened intently, assessing Kevin's responses. You've had your share of encounters with danger, he acknowledged. But the team deals with threats that are on a different scale. Are you prepared for the challenges that come with this level of responsibility? Kevin's resolve didn't waver as he replied firmly, I know it won't be easy, but I'm ready to step up and do whatever it takes to protect people. It is not that I choose to be a hero for fun or something, I choose it because a certain someone reminded me that with power comes great responsibility and that you cannot run away from it, Kevin said solemnly looking at Batman. There was few seconds of silence until Batman broke the silence with the huh. 1. As the conversation continued, Batman delved deeper into Kevin's background, his motivations, and his understanding of the world of heroes and villains. Kevin answered each question with unwavering determination, showing that he had thought long and hard about the responsibilities that came with being a hero. Batman's line of questioning shifted, delving into Kevin's moral code, ethics, and commitment to justice. The young hero answered each question with sincerity and conviction, determined to prove himself worthy of joining the team. After what felt like an eternity, Batman finally seemed satisfied with Kevin's responses. He stepped up from the table and approached the young hero. The team faces formidable adversaries, Batman said, his voice softer than before. But it also offers an opportunity to make a difference. If you're truly committed to our cause, you will have my support. Kevin's heart swelled with gratitude and relief. To have Batman's approval was a tremendous honor and a validation of his journey as a hero. 1. Thank you, Kevin stood up said sincerely. I won't let you down. Batman extended his gloved hand, and Kevin shook it firmly, sealing their agreement. Welcome to the team, Kevin White. Flashback end. Present. Do you have a mission for us? Kid Flash Speed walked toward him and asks. Mission assignments or the Batman's responsibility Red Tornado in a stoic manner of voice and demeanor. Yeah, well the Batman's with a Robin, doing the dynamic duo thing in Gotham. But you are headed somewhere, right? Kid Flash said in a goofy smile. If we can be of help. Aqua in his calm demeanor said to Red Tornado. Wally and the other young heroes ask if he has a mission for them as Batman being back in Gotham City fighting crime with Robin. Red Tornado turned around while out replying and walked up to the computer and after typing showed a picture. This is Kent Nelson, a friend. He is 106 years old guy. Doesn't look a day over 90 kid flash whisper to Artemis. He has been missing for 23 days. Kent was a charter member of the Justice Society the precursor to some of your mentors Justice League. Said Red Tornado. Of course, Mr. Nelson was Earth Sorcerer Supreme. He was Dr. Fate. Said the Aqualad, while firmly looking at the legendary hero picture. 1. Although not an official mission, Red Tornado tells them about Kent Nelson's disappearance, and that he used to be a hero named Dr. Fate in the Justice Society of America. Kid Flash again whisper to Artemis more like Dr. Fake Guy knows a little advanced science Dumbledore would up to scare the bad guys and press the babes. Wally reveals to Artemis that he is immediately skeptical about Nelson's magical powers, guessing it's all science and misdirection. Red Tornado further tells the team that Kent is the guardian of the Helmet of Fate, a powerful artifact. 1. Kent may simply be on one of his walkabouts but he's caretaker to the Helmet of Fate the source of the Doctor's mystic might, and it is unwise to leave such power unguarded. Miss Martian remembering her hometown he's like the great sorcerer priests and priestesses of Mars I would be honored to help find him. Kid Flash to impress his recent crush, me too so honored I can barely stand it magic rocks. 
He even volunteers to help when he thinks it will impress Megan, herself a believer. Kevin who is standing awkwardly while Red Tornado explain as it is his first mission briefing moment. Near Kid Flash and Artemis, he hears Kid Flash whispering to Artemis about not believing in magic but later volunteer to the mission. Kevin whisper at Kid Flash with a stern look. Dude, this mission involves magic, something you've always been skeptical about. Kid Flash shrugged and whisper back. Chill dude, although I don't believe in magic, but I'll get the job done. Take this it is the key to the Tower of Fate. Red Tornado provide team leader with the key to Kent Nelson's Tower of Fate in Salem. Few minute later, Kevin in his new hero outfit, created by the use of gray matter and upgrade, a new hero name as Omni. 2. They were ready to leave in the bioship towards Salem. And, this is written because some said that in I quote MC introduction seems fast they had no questions or any suspicions especially considering the Omnitrix and the MC background I don't see Batman or even the Green Lanterns not be curious and paranoid about such an unknown. When after thinking about it, we deliver this to you all. 1. When writing previous chapter, we were only think that because Blue Beetle wasn't questioned when when he had that awesome scarab. 1. Chapter 6, Chapter 6 The Call to Action. Chapter 6 The Call to Action. As they arrived at the designated location, anticipation filled the air. However, there was nothing there no Tower of Fate, no signs of Kent Nelson. It was as if their destination had vanished into thin air. Frustration simmered among the team as they scanned the area. Kid Flash ran in circles, searching for any hidden entrances, while Superboy and Miss Martian used their respective powers to sense energies. But the tower remained elusive. Kevin, ever the curious and determined hero, decided to investigate the surrounding area. Kevin transformed into Wild Mutt via Omnitrix but again nothing. Although team were curious how Kevin in a Wild Mutt form doesn't have an eye, he wandered a bit farther from the team, his senses scanning for any clues. That's when he saw it a peculiar cat with fur that seemed to shimmer like moonlight. The cat fixed its gaze on Kevin for a moment, its eyes filled with an odd intelligence, before hurrying away into the shadows. Later finding nothing Kevin transformed back and returned to the team. 1. Meanwhile, the rest of the team continued their search for the Tower of Fate. Artemis, always the sharp thinker, suggested a more scientific explanation for the tower's disappearance. Perhaps it's a matter of cloaking technology or advanced illusions, she mused, her eyes scanning the empty space. Wally West, known as Kid Flash, overheard Artemis's suggestion, initially impressed with Artemis's suggestion of a scientific explanation for the tower's disappearance but pretends to believe in a mystical explanation for Megan. You know, maybe there's some ancient spell at play here, something only true believers of magic can see, he said with a theatrical tone. Calder, the team's level-headed leader, stepped forward with a more pragmatic approach. Regardless of the cause, we need to find a way to access the tower. Kent Nelson's safety and the Helm of Fate's security are at stake. Calder produced a small, ornate key and examined it closely. He deduced that gaining access to the tower required an act of faith. With a decisive motion, he inserted the key into the air, where an invisible keyhole seemed to materialize. The Tower of Fate itself appeared around the key, its majestic spires rising from the ground. The team exchanged glances of amazement and relief as the tower became visible. But before they could celebrate their discovery, the door slammed shut, disappearing into thin air behind them. Inside the tower, the team found themselves in a mystical chamber, bathed in an otherworldly light. A spectral image of Kent Nelson materialized before them, his eyes filled with ancient wisdom. Why have you come? The spectral image of Kent Nelson asked, his voice echoing with power. Wally, still trying to impress Megan, decided to play along. We are true believers of magic, he proclaimed with exaggerated conviction. The moment his words left his lips, the ground beneath them gave way. The team plummeted toward a lava pit far below, their screams of surprise filling the chamber. As they descended, Kevin's instincts kicked in. With a swift transformation, he transformed into Stinkfly, his insectoid form equipped for aerial maneuvers. He swooped down and managed to catch Superboy just inches from the scorching lava. 1. Superboy dangled from Kevin's insectal grip, his boots dangerously close to the molten heat below. Thanks, Omni. Although you stink I mean literally, you just saved my favorite boots from melting, thanks again. The team found themselves teetering on the precipice of a fiery death, their screams echoing in the chamber as they plummeted toward a scorching lava pit. Fear gripped them until Megan Morse, the empathic Martian, finally broke the tense silence. We were sent here by Red Tornado, she shouted, her voice carrying through the chamber. Our mission is to make sure Kent Nelson is okay. As the words left her lips, the molten pool below them vanished in an instant, replaced by solid ground. The relief that washed over the team was palpable. Artemis, the archer and sharp-tongued member of the team, turned to Wally West, known as Kid Flash, with an accusing glare. Nice going, Wally. Pretending to be a true believer nearly got us all killed. Wally shifted uncomfortably, his bravado waning. I can't believe in magic, Artemis. Everything can be explained by science. Even as he spoke, Calder A.H.M., the stoic leader of the team, opened a trapdoor beneath their feet. To their surprise, they found themselves not in a pit of lava, but in a snowy landscape. Wally, ever the skeptic, crossed his arms and insisted, this is just a pocket dimension. Science can explain it. Megan couldn't help but be curious about Wally's adamant disbelief in magic. She turned to Calder and inquired, why is Wally so opposed to the idea of magic? Calder, who had once been a brief student at Atlantis's Conservatory of Sorcery, offered insight. Wally uses his understanding of science to control what he cannot comprehend. To admit the existence of magic would be to relinquish the last vestiges of that control. In the snow-covered landscape, the team discovered Kent's walking stick floating in the air. Artemis and Wally's while bickering they reached for it at the same time, and in a flash of magic, the staff flew off with both of them, disappearing into the unknown. Megan and Calder watched Wally and Artemis vanish, concern etched across their faces. Superboy, always the quiet observer, joined them. We need to find a way to get them back, Superboy said, his voice filled with determination. Megan nodded, her telepathic abilities already at work as she searched for any trace of their missing teammates. Together with Kevin, Calder, and Superboy, they found a door in the air that led back into the main tower. 
Wally and Artemis reappeared on a platform across from Abra Cadavra and Clarion the Witchboy, the very villains they had come to confront. The staff they had taken with them had apparently re-energized Kent Nelson, who now stood by their side. The tension in the air was palpable, after re-energized Kent used his magic to call and magical elevator to escape from the two formidable foes. Kent Nelson introduced himself, his voice filled with gravitas. Abra Cadavra may be a charlatan, using science to simulate magic, Kent explained, but Clarion is a lord of chaos, a being of tremendous magical power. As the elevator come to the destination, they all found themselves standing next to a giant bell, one that seemed to hum with ancient power. All team gather there, Kevin, now with his enhanced suit as Omni, stood ready, his Omnitrix in recharge mode, Megan, Calder, and Superboy tumbled from thin air, reappearing next to their teammates, but the relief was short-lived. Abra Cadabra and Clarion was hot on their heels, their malevolent intentions clear. Suddenly, Abra Cadabra unleashed a barrage of electrifying energy blasts, sending the heroes scrambling for cover. Kent Nelson, using his walking stick, rang a massive bell. It glowed with mystical energy, and in an instant, Kent, Wally, and Clarion disappeared, transported to the very top of the Tower of Fate. Superboy clenched his fists, his Kryptonian strength simmering just beneath the surface. That guy always manages to cook up trouble. Kevin White, adjusting the high-tech gauntlets of his battlesuit, nodded in agreement. I've trained for situations like this. We'll handle it. Aqualad's calm demeanor belied his determination. Let's go, team. We need to put an end. Abra Cadabra, clad in his signature attire, stood amidst a swirling vortex of shimmering lights and metallic orbs. His laughter echoed through the streets as he unleashed bursts of energy from his futuristic staff. Superboy's eyes blazed with resolve. This ends now. The team advanced cautiously, Miss Martian's telepathic abilities allowing her to monitor Abra Cadabra's thoughts. She relayed his plan to the others. He's using a combination of technology and misdirection to confuse and disorient us. Kevin White activated the combat mode of his battlesuit, enhancing his physical abilities to peak human levels. No problem. I'll take on his gadgets. 1. Aqualad nodded. Superboy and I will focus on taking him down. Miss Martian, be ready to use your telepathy to disrupt his concentration. The battle commenced with Superboy and Aqualad charging towards Abra Cadavra. The magician, with a flourish of his staff, conjured a swirling vortex that sent debris hurtling toward them. Superboy used his strength to deflect the projectiles, while Aqualad manipulated water to create a protective barrier. Kevin White, agile in his battle suit, leaped into the fray. His enhanced reflexes allowed him to dodge Abra Cadabra's energy blasts with ease. He unleashed a series of precise strikes with his gauntlets, aiming for the magician's devices. Sparks flew as metal clashed with technology. Abra Cadabra sneered, conjuring a holographic illusion of a dozen copies of himself. The duplicates danced around the heroes, creating a dizzying display of chaos. Superboy and Aqualad struggled to discern the real Abra Cadabra from the illusions. Miss Martian concentrated, her telepathic abilities piercing through the illusion. She located the real Abra Cadabra's thoughts and relayed his position to her teammates. He's to your left, Super Adeshdot. At the tower's peak, exposed to the vast expanse of the night sky, the helmet of fate waited, its presence radiating power. Clarion wasted no time and aimed a deadly spell at Kent Nelson. With his last reserves of strength, Kent encased himself, Wally, and the helmet of fate in a protective magical bubble. The old sorcerer succumbed to his injuries, his life force slipping away. In his final moments, Kent Nelson whispered to Wally, believe in magic. With that, he passed away in Wally's arms, leaving behind a legacy of mysticism and a profound message that would linger in the young speedster's mind. Amidst the chaos in the mystical chamber at the top of the Tower of Fate, Clary and the Witch Boy continued to batter the protective bubble that surrounded Wally West, Kent Nelson, and the coveted Helmet of Fate. Their situation had become increasingly dire, with Kent's life slipping away. Wally, desperation in his eyes, tried to resuscitate Kent, but his efforts proved futile. The old man had given everything to protect the helm, and now it seemed he had given his life. In the midst of the turmoil, a telepathic message reached Wally's mind. It was Megan, Miss Martian, communicating urgently with him. They were losing the fight against Abra Cadabra down below, and they needed Dr. Fate's help. Wally's mind raced as he considered their options. This had to be another test, similar to the one with the key. It was a test of faith, a test of his belief in the mystical world that he had so staunchly denied. As Clarion's relentless assault on the bubble continued, he issued a warning to Wally. Put on the helmet, and you risk being unable to ever take it off. You will be bound to it for all eternity. Wally hesitated, the weight of the decision bearing down on him. But he knew that they had no other choice. He couldn't let Kent's sacrifice be in vain. In a decisive moment, Wally placed the helmet of fate on his head. In an instant, he found himself in a realm unlike any he had ever experienced a calm, dark, and echoey place. It was the inside of the helmet of fate. To his surprise, Kent Nelson was there with him. Kent's form appeared before him, and Wally realized that Kent's soul had been brought into the helmet along with his own. Wally's body remained in the real world, but it was no longer under his control. Instead, it was being manipulated by Nabu, the true Doctor Fate, and a Lord of Order. The power of the helmet surged through Wally, its ancient magic flowing through him. Together, Wally and Kent watched as Doctor Fate, now in Wally's body, confronted Clarion. The battle that unfolded was unlike anything Wally had ever seen. Doctor Fate, the enigmatic sorcerer bound to the helmet of Nabu, stood tall and resolute. His indigo cloak billowed around him as he raised his golden-clad arms, summoning the arcane energies that flowed through him. One. Clarion, the witch boy, floated above the ground with a malevolent grin. His cat familiar, Teakle, perched on his shoulder, eyes gleaming with mischief. Time to play, fate. Their confrontation had been inevitable, a clash of opposing forces one a guardian of order, the other a harbinger of chaos. Dr. Fate's voice echoed with ancient power. Your games end here, Clarion. You've tampered with the natural order for far too long. Clarion cackled, red energy crackling around him. Oh, but that's what makes it fun, fate. Chaos rules, remember. With a wave of his hand, Clarion unleashed a torrent of chaotic magic. Dr. Fate countered with a brilliant beam of order, the clash of energies sending shockwaves through the temple. Their battle raged on, a spectacular display of mystic might. Reality itself seemed to warp and shift with each incantation and counterspell. Amidst the chaos, Dr. Fate's voice remained steady. You underestimate the balance, Clarion. Order and chaos must coexist. 1. Clarion's eyes blazed with defiance. 
I'll take chaos any day. Dr. Fate's mastery of the helm's magic was evident as he countered Clarion's chaotic spells. In the end, Dr. Fate emerged victorious, realizing that Teekl, Clarion's familiar, served as the witch boy's anchor on the earthly plane, just as the helmet was Nabi's anchor. With Teekl incapacitated, Clarion had no choice but to flee. Back in the Tower of Fate, Dr. Fate and Wally Body wielded his newfound power, causing Abra Cadabra's clothes and technology to vanish into thin air. Superboy, now unburdened, delivered a powerful punch that rendered the sorcerer unconscious. As the battle reached its conclusion, a dilemma remained. Nabu, possessing Wally's body, had no intention of relinquishing control. He did not want to be confined to the helmet for eternity. However, it was Kent Nelson's soul that provided the voice of reason and compassion. He argued that Wally would ensure the helm was used for noble purposes and offered to remain inside the helmet to keep Nabu company. He was willing to delay his reunion with his beloved Inza for the sake of safeguarding the balance of power. Before Wally could fully comprehend the weight of his new responsibility, Kent imparted one last piece of advice, his voice tinged with warmth and humor. Find your own little spitfire, one who won't let you get away with nothing. Dot. But before Kent could finish his thought, Wally made a crucial decision. With resolve in his eyes, he removed the helmet of fate, returning control of his body to himself. The helmet rested in his hands, its power palpable. The mission to secure the helm had been successful, but Kent Nelson died that day. Wally West, now in possession of the ancient artifact, had embarked on a new journey one that would test his faith, challenge his beliefs, and lead him down an uncharted path of magic and mysticism. In the quiet of the next day, the team gathered in their base, reflecting on their recent mission. Wally West, also known as Kid Flash, placed the helmet of fate on his shelf of souvenirs. It sat there among the relics of their adventures, a testament to the mystical world they had encountered. Artemis, the sharp-witted archer of the team, came to check on Wally. As they talked, Wally couldn't help but address the elephant in the room. I still don't believe in magic, he admitted, despite all that he had seen and experienced. His skepticism remained unshaken. Artemis couldn't help but roll her eyes playfully. You're such a geek, Wally. Wally's brow furrowed as he remembered Kent Nelson's final piece of advice the notion of finding his own spitfire. It tugged at his thoughts, a nagging reminder of something he had yet to truly understand. But, ever the master of deflection, Wally immediately brushed aside his introspective moment. With a mischievous grin, he turned to Miss Martian, who was nearby, and attempted to change the subject. Chapter 7, Chapter 7 Bond, Kevin Bonds. Chapter 7 Bond, Kevin Bonds. Warning, warning, warning. Filler chapter filler chapter filler chapter. Filler chapter part 1 plus 2 plus 3. Few days after joining the team. Kevin wearing his custom created combat slash hero suit, a sleek white black ensemble adorned with the Omnitrix symbol, exuded an air of advanced technology. He was eager to prove himself to his new teammates. Aqualad, the team's leader, addressed the group. Team, today we have our new member joining us. Robin, the acrobatic detective, nodded in approval. Welcome to the team, Kevin. Miss Martian, her emerald skin glowing softly, offered a warm smile. We're like a family here. You'll fit right in. Superboy, with his muscular build and confident demeanor, gave a nod of acknowledgement. Just don't get in my way. Kid Flash, the speedster with a perpetual smirk, leaned in closer to Kevin. So, what's the deal with that Omnitrix thingy? Can you turn into a big, powerful alien? Kevin grinned, activating the Omnitrix to demonstrate. In a burst of green light, he transformed into a towering alien with four arms and a powerful physique. Yep, I can become four arms. Kid Flash's eyes widened with excitement. That's so cool. Can you turn into more aliens? Kevin nodded. I've got a whole arsenal of them. Heat Blast, XLR8, Diamond Head, and more. Superboy crossed his arms, intrigued. Impressive. I could use someone with your firepower for training. Aqualad, always the voice of reason, brought the discussion back to business. Today's mission is to investigate a disturbance in Happy Harbor. Reports suggest an unknown meta causing chaos. Kevin, you'll be working slash observing alongside Superboy, Miss Martian, and Robin. Kevin nodded eagerly. I'm ready. Let's do this. The team arrived in Happy Harbor to find a scene of chaos. Buildings were damaged, and people were fleeing in panic. At the center of the chaos was a giant robot, wreaking havoc with powerful laser blasts. Robin surveyed the situation. We need to stop that robot. Kevin, can you transform into something that can take it on? Kevin activated the Omnitrix, transforming into a fiery figure with molten rock skin. Heat Blast, ready for action. With a burst of flames, Heat Blast soared into the sky, drawing the robot's attention away from the fleeing civilians. Miss Martian used her telekinesis to fly up in the sky and create a telepathic link, allowing the team to communicate. Heat Blast unleashed a stream of intense fire, causing the robot to stagger backward. Superboy, with his Kryptonian strength, leaped into the fray, delivering a powerful punch that sent the robot toppling. As the team worked together to dismantle the robot, Kevin noticed a young girl trapped in the rubble. Without hesitation, he turned the dial and transformed into four arms and used his immense strength to lift the debris, freeing the girl. Robin, impressed by Kevin's quick thinking, commended him. Nice work, Kevin. You're proving to be a valuable addition to the team. The robot, now heavily damaged, emitted a distress signal that echoed through the airwaves. Miss Martian intercepted the signal, revealing its origin. It was being controlled remotely from a nearby warehouse. Superboy clenched his fists. Let's find the person responsible and put an end to this. In the dimly lit warehouse, the team confronted the villain behind the remote-controlled robot. He was a tech-savvy meta with an array of gadgets at his disposal. The villain, his eyes wide with fear, attempted to activate a hidden escape mechanism. But before he could react, Kevin again dialed the watch and transformed into XLR8, a speedster alien, and zipped forward with lightning-fast reflexes, disarming the villain, and pinning him to the ground. Robin's detective skills kicked in. Who are you working for? Why did you attack Happy Harbor? The villain, struggling to catch his breath, confessed. I was hired by an underground organization. They wanted to cause chaos and distract the heroes. Superboy, his eyes narrowing, demanded answers. Who's behind this? Tell us everything. The villain hesitated, then spilled the beans about his employers and their sinister plans. As the team apprehended the villain and called in the authorities, Kevin reverted to his human form, the Omnitrix symbol on his chest fading away. Miss Martian gave him a reassuring smile. Great job out there, Kevin. Kid Flash, ever the Joker, added, yeah, and you've got the coolest gadgets. Superboy just nodded in agreement. Kevin felt a sense of camaraderie he hadn't experienced before. 
Thanks, guys. I'm honored to be a part of this team. Back at the Mount Justice, the team debriefed on their mission's success. Aqualad commended everyone's efforts. Today, we stopped a dangerous threat and protected innocent lives. That's what the team is all about. Robin, with a mischievous grin, turned to Kevin. You passed your initiation with flying colors. Kevin smiled, a sense of belonging settling in. I'm proud to be a part of this team. And I promise, I'll always have your backs. Filler 2. Robin, ever efficient, began the briefing. Team, today we're dealing with a situation in Bloodhaven. There's a new villain in town causing chaos, and we need to put a stop to it. Kevin listened intently, eager to contribute. He had trained extensively with the Omnitrix, mastering the abilities of several powerful aliens. Aqualad, the team's leader, turned to Kevin. Kevin, this is your beginning phase of hero mission with us. We rely on teamwork and trust each other. Stick close to us, and we'll get through this together. Kevin nodded, appreciating the support. Got it, Aqualad. I'm here to help in any way I can. With the briefing concluded, the team geared up and headed for Bloodhaven. As they arrived at the scene, chaos reigned. Buildings were ablaze, and the supervillain responsible, a metahuman with fiery abilities, wreaked havoc. Superboy clenched his fists. We need to contain the fires and stop this guy before it gets worse. Kid Flash, with his characteristic smirk, cracked his knuckles. Time to cool him down. Miss Martian, using her telepathic abilities, scanned the area. I sense fear and anger. This guy is emotionally unstable. Aqualad took command. Team, we need to work together. Superboy, help with the fires. Kid Flash, cool down the supervillain. Miss Martian, try to calm him mentally. Kevin, stay close and be ready for anything. The team sprang into action, their years of training and experience evident in their coordinated efforts. Superboy used his super strength to create barriers, containing the spreading fires. Kid Flash raced toward the supervillain, generating gusts of wind to counteract the flames. Miss Martian reached out with her telepathy, attempting to soothe the man's turbulent emotions. It's going to be okay. We're here to help. But the fiery metahuman, overwhelmed by anger and fear, resisted her efforts. He unleashed a wave of searing flames that forced the heroes to retreat. Kevin, observing the chaos, decided it was time to make his move. He activated the Omnitrix, transforming into Heat Blast, a fiery alien with control over flames. With a burst of fiery energy, Heat Blast soared into the air, creating a protective barrier against the supervillain's flames. The metahuman, momentarily stunned by the appearance of a new threat, faltered. Heat Blast's voice boomed with authority. Enough, it's time to cool off. Kid Flash seized the opportunity and generated a whirlwind of wind, engulfing the fiery metahuman. Superboy, with a powerful leap, tackled him to the ground. Heat Blast absorbing the flames nearby, extinguishing the flames. Miss Martian, using her telepathy, reached out once more, this time with a calming presence. You're safe now, we're here to help you. The metahuman's rage began to subside, and his flames flickered out. He looked around, disoriented but no longer a threat. Heat Blast reverted to his human form, Kevin, and approached the metahuman cautiously. It's going to be okay, we'll get you the help you need. As the situation in Bloodhaven was brought under control, the heroes regrouped. Aqualad clapped Kevin on the shoulder, a proud smile on his face. Great job, Kevin. You handled yourself well out there. Kevin grinned, feeling a sense of camaraderie he had been longing for. Thanks, Aqualad. I'm honored to be part of this team. The supervillain was taken into custody, and the heroes returned to Mount Justice. In the debriefing room, they discussed the mission's success and their effective teamwork. Robin addressed Kevin. Nicely done, Kevin. The room erupted in cheers and applause as Kevin, overwhelmed with gratitude, realized that he had found not just a team but a friends. As the days went by, Kevin bonded with his fellow heroes. He and Kid Flash quickly became fast friends, sharing jokes and pranks that kept the team's spirits high. Superboy and Aqualad welcomed him with open arms mostly the latter but when come to sparing the former welcomed him with open arms, offering guidance and support. Miss Martian, with her empathetic nature, helped him adjust. Kevin's unique abilities with the Omnitrix added an asset to the team. His transformations into different aliens provided creative solutions to the most complex problems. One evening, as the team gathered around the common area at Mount Justice, Kevin couldn't help but reflect on his journey. He had gone from being a solo hero to a member of one of the most respected young hero teams in the world. Miss Martian, noticing his contemplative expression, sat down beside him. You seem deep in thought, Kevin. Everything okay? Kevin nodded, a grateful smile on his face. I was just thinking about how lucky I am to be here. You guys have become like the closest thing to family for me. Miss Martian placed a reassuring hand on his shoulder. We're glad to have you, Kevin. We're not just a team, we're friends who look out for each other. As the night wore on, laughter and camaraderie filled the room. The heroes of Young Justice knew that they were stronger together, and with Kevin's unique abilities and unwavering spirit, they were more formidable than ever. Kevin had found his place among the heroes, and together, they would continue to face whatever challenges the world threw their way, as a team and as friends. The boys, the sun was setting over Mount Justice, casting warm hues of orange and pink across the tranquil landscape. The team had gathered in the common area, winding down after a long day of training and missions. The atmosphere was relaxed, and laughter filled the air as the young heroes shared stories and camaraderie. Amid it all, Kevin White, sat on a couch, quietly observing his teammates. He had been part of the team for a few weeks now, but the bond among the members was strong, and he liked it here. Robin noticed Kevin's thoughtful expression and decided it was time to make him feel more at ease. He gestured toward the group of male team members. Hey, Kevin, come over here and join us. We're just sharing some embarrassing stories from our early hero days. Kevin, grateful for the invitation, made his way over to the group. Superboy, Kid Flash, and Aqualad welcomed him with friendly nods and pats on the back. Aqualad, with his calm and composed demeanor, spoke first. We've all had our fair share of blunders and mishaps when we first started out. It's all part of the learning process. Kid Flash chimed in with an impish grin. Yay, like the time I accidentally ran through a parade and ended up covered in confetti for a week. Superboy, who had been rather reserved around Kevin until now, chuckled at the memory. Or when I mistook a vending machine for a supervillain and tried to punch it into submission. Kevin couldn't help but laugh at their stories, feeling a sense of connection forming. Wow, you guys really have been through a lot. Robin shared a mischievous grin. Oh, the stories we could tell. 
But don't worry, we'll save some for another time. As the evening continued, Kevin found himself engaged in conversations with the male members of the team. Superboy opened about his experiences growing up as a clone, Kid Flash shared his love for pranks and good-natured mischief, and Aqualad talked about his responsibilities as the team's leader. Kevin was particularly intrigued by Superboy's story and his struggle to find his identity. I can't imagine how tough that must have been, Superboy, but it's clear you've become a strong and capable hero. Superboy nodded, appreciating the sentiment. Thanks, Kevin. As the night wore on, the group's laughter and conversation continued to flow. Kevin felt a sense of belonging that he had been searching for since joining the team. These heroes were more than just colleagues, they were becoming his friends. As they wrapped up their evening, Aqualad extended an invitation. Tomorrow, we're planning a team training session at the beach. You should join us, Kevin. Kevin's eyes lit up with excitement. I'd love to, Aqualad. Thanks for including me. Come that is already given, we are team now and foremost, we are friends, said Kid Flash in his goofy smile. The following day, the team gathered at a secluded beach. The waves crashed against the shore as they prepared for their training session. Aqualad like a leader, led the exercises, focusing on teamwork and coordination. Superboy, his Kryptonian strength on full display, lifted heavy objects with ease. Kid Flash zipped around, creating whirlwinds that challenged the team's agility. Aqualad demonstrated his hydrokinesis by manipulating the water, creating obstacles and challenges for the others. Kevin watched with fascination, eager to contribute. He decided to transform into one of his alien forms, Heat Blast, a humanoid creature with the power to control fire. Flames erupted from Kevin's hands as he manipulated the fire, creating intricate shapes and patterns in the air. The team watched in awe as he showcased his abilities. Kid Flash's eyes widened with excitement. That's seriously cool, Heat Blast. Heat Blast grinned, his fiery eyes glowing with enthusiasm. Thanks, Kid Flash. It's one of my favorite forms. The training session continued, with each member of the team contributing their unique abilities. They worked together seamlessly, their camaraderie growing stronger with each exercise. As the day turned into evening, they gathered around a bonfire on the beach, sharing stories and laughter once more. The fire crackled and cast a warm glow on their faces. Superboy, usually reserved, spoke up. You know, Kevin, I've been pretty distant since you joined the team. I wasn't sure how to handle having another person with around. Kevin nodded, understanding Superboy's perspective. I get it, Superboy. It can be challenging to adjust to change. Superboy continued, his voice tinged with vulnerability. But I've realized that having you on the team is a strength. We can learn from each other, grow stronger together. Kevin smiled warmly. I feel the same way, Superboy. We're all here to support each other, no matter our abilities or backgrounds. Their conversation was interrupted by Kid Flash, who playfully threw a marshmallow into the fire. Enough with the heartfelt speeches, you two, let's enjoy some esmories. Laughter filled the air as they roasted marshmallows and shared stories long into the night. It was a night of bonding and connection, one that solidified Kevin's place within the team. It was a crisp morning at Mount Justice, the sun casting a warm glow over the training grounds. The members of the team were gathered, going through their routines and honing their skills. Robin was leading a combat simulation, Miss Martian was practicing her telekinesis, and Aqualad supervised a sparring match between Superboy and Kid Flash, Artemis shooting her arrows while doing obstacle courses. As Kevin walked onto the training grounds, the team couldn't help but glance in his direction. He was a lean, confident young man with a pair of high omni-gauntlets that hinted at his ominological prowess. Robin approached him with a welcoming smile. Kevin, good to have you join us. Kevin returned the smile, adjusting his gauntlets. Thanks, Robin. I'm excited to be here. As the morning went on, Kevin joined them in their training exercises. He showcased his impressive martial arts skills and his remarkable agility. Kid Flash couldn't help but be impressed as he watched Kevin perform a series of acrobatic flips. Nice moves, Omni. Kid Flash said, offering a high five. Kevin grinned and returned the gesture. Thanks, Kid Flash. You're not too shabby yourself. After training, they gathered in the common area for a much-needed break. As they lounged on the couches, Robin initiated a conversation. Kid Flash's eyes widened with excitement. Dude, the Omnitrix that's awesome. Can we see some of those forms in action? Kevin nodded and activated the Omnitrix on his wrist. He began to transform, his body morphing and shifting until he stood before them as a towering, four-armed alien with rocky skin. Meet forearms, Kevin said with a grin. He's strong, durable, and packs a mean punch. Forearms flexed his muscular arms, drawing impressed whistles from the team. Miss Martian's curiosity got the better of her as she used her telepathic abilities to communicate with Kevin. Can you feel the thoughts and emotions of these alien forms when you're transformed? She asked. Kevin nodded. Yeah. Superboy chimed in, his interest peaked. Have you encountered any particularly unique or challenging forms? Kevin transformed back into his human form, pondering the question. Well, there's Heat Blast, who can shoot fire from his hands. And then there's XLR8, who's incredibly fast. Each form has its strengths and weaknesses. The team was fascinated by Kevin's abilities and eager to see more. As they chatted, Kid Flash suggested, how about a little friendly competition? We'll see if we can outmaneuver one of your alien forms. Kevin's eyes sparkled with enthusiasm. Sure thing, who's up for a race against XLR8? Kid Flash raised his hand immediately, his competitive spirit showing. Oh, me, me. Pick me, I'm in. The race was on, and Kevin transformed into XLR8, a sleek alien with lightning-fast reflexes. Kid Flash and XLR8 dashed through the training grounds, the wind whipping past them. Kid Flash's natural speed was impressive, but XLR8's alien abilities allowed him to keep pace. In the end, it was a close call, but Kid Flash managed to cross the finish line seconds ahead of XLR8. The team cheered, and Kid Flash couldn't hide his triumphant grin. Kevin reverted to his human form, panting with exhilaration. You're fast, Kid Flash. That was a great race. Kid Flash grinned. Thanks, Omni. You're pretty quick yourself. As the day continued, Kevin bonded with the team, sharing stories and learning about their backgrounds. They all discovered common interests, from their love of heroics to their appreciation for ominology. The day came to an end, and the team gathered for dinner. They shared laughter, stories, and a newfound sense of unity. Kevin had seamlessly become a part of the team family. As they sat around the table, Robin raised his glass in a toast. To new friendships and a stronger team. Welcome to the team, Kevin. Kevin raised his glass with a grateful smile. Cheers, Robin. I'm honored to be a part of this incredible team. 
In the weeks that followed, Kevin continued to strengthen his friendships with his teammates. They trained together, faced challenges together, and supported each other through the ups and downs of her life. As Kevin looked out at the team gathered around him, he couldn't help but feel grateful. He had found not only a team of heroes but a group of friends who accepted him. Comment. Three comments. Vote. Two left. Chapter 8. Note. Will be deleted after a week. We will be going on a temporary break for a week. A death has occurred on my family friend's house. The friend is also one of the writer or co-author for this novel. Doing this without him doesn't feel right or even fun and it's feeling more like work. Temporary break for a week. We will upload in next Thursday or Friday. Till then have some idea about our story? Comment it and let us know. Comment. Five comments. Vote. Two left. New chapter is coming soon. Write a review.